think Tom was quite robust uh, in, in what he was saying. Um, if you take Tom's uh, business model, and we discussed this earlier, um, if you take the Copyright Act that pertains to the year 2000, and then you fast forward to the chart and judgment, and then the, the statutory instrument, the statutory instrument, so as to remove any doubt around the chart and judgment, removed us or, or, or re restored that very same position. We didn't introduce any new policy. So, so lest anybody say that, uh, how would I put it to you? Well, let me put it another way. What we need to do now is we need to reflect the fact that Tom's business has grown exponentially in that period of time, but the legislation uh, has stayed largely the same. And then you have to have regard now as well to certain protections that exist for intermediaries in, in light of, we'd say, the SABAM versus Scarlet Judgment and so on and so forth. You have to have regard to the you know, e-commerce directive, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, which sets, sets down certain protections. So look, in fairness, the, the point is made by Tom, and I, I will acknowledge publicly that, and, and Paul makes the same point, uh, if somebody transgresses through the medium of boards.ie, should boards.ie be held responsible for that transgression? Yeah, is essentially. Simon, Simon, like something, yeah. yeah, but but just can I just finish it off? So so <coughs> the, the challenge for us from a legislative point of view then is how do you uh, how do you remove the barrier to innovation, or how do you legislate, or is it possible then to legislate such that boards.ie does not become uh, doesn't have to put away a, a war chest of hundreds of thousands of euros to potentially defend uh, spurious cases where, where claims come in. And that's the challenge. So uh, this is why we're here today, is, to, is to, to, to hear what is being said in relation to that and to try and address that in some way, shape, or form. Now, if people argue that that's not strictly within the, 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 the CRC, the CRC uh, was framed by Owen O'Dell. But the CRC, if you look at question 86, of the CRC, you know, it says, you know, have we missed anything is the question. What have we missed? That opens up a space for anybody to make a submission on anything relating to issues that are not covered by the questions. It doesn't matter that you don't have a technical knowledge around the questions, because not everybody here does, including myself, to be frank about it. But the main thing, well, People may laugh, but I, I mean, I, you know, not everybody's going to have a complete, deep knowledge about the 86 questions that, that apply here. The answer is exactly what you've suggested people do if they want to express their opinion, that they plow through those 86 questions. You haven't done them yourself? No, no, I, I, I have. Have you answered them? I, no, no, I, I, I have looked at the see, questions. Can we correct them? <laughs> you see, I, I think, I, I don't mind people being facetious, okay? You know, you can be facetious if you want to be, Simon. I'm always okay. facetious. Okay. <laughs> well, it doesn't become you, right? And let's kind of... Let's, no, let's no, that is a real question, because, Minister, that's the question no, no. that you responded to people with when, they, when after you signed this SI, no. you said I, that I, I people think, should I go and now tone it participate. Down. I think you should tone it down. People should participate. I think you should tone it down. I Do you? Know. Do you think I should tone it down? I think you should. Yes, I think you should tone okay, it down. Okay, I'm too loud. Okay. Apologies. We will, make, we will make better points if we say... Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Even so, though I shout. <laughs> okay. So, can I just get to the number? Quickly, if you would. <laughs> in, in essence, if people come in with submissions that throw up questions that are not here in the 86 uh, questions, then, then we have to grapple with that. The process has to grapple but with Owen that. Owen is well. being very clear that it is outside the remit of the, of the CRC. And, yeah. and uh, he, it's always the CRC itself. There is that, I mean, I can yeah. put the slide back up if Fair you want. You know. but, uh, so I think what you're saying is one thing, and what's being written down is, is something no, else. Because if you look at copyright legislation, I mean, it will be for government ultimately to decide as to what the legislative framework will be, okay? And, and Owen is right to make the distinction. But if you're telling me that within the legislative space, you're being absolutely and utterly uh, hindered, and, 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 and it doesn't fall within the consultation process. Which it doesn't. Th that's fair enough, but that's, that's, that's arguably semantic, because what government still has to do, government still has to grapple with the challenges that you face government as a has business. Government failed to legislate here. They have passed the, the duty to legislate onto the judiciary. 
you had an opportunity to incorporate You see, you're, the you're, you're living rights. in the past tense, Simon. I because am, the reason, because you're doing it again. No, because the reason, the reason we're here today, the reason we're here today is to now see, I mean, I met with Tom earlier on. Tom set out a very cogent argument to me about the, how his business model has evolved. But the legislation is behind the curve in relation to his business model. And Paul makes this, the point that the ISPs now find themselves in a position where they have to put away a war chest, if you will, to meet the potential for litigation so that if two citizens or two competing interests post something and challenge around it or somebody seeks to injunctive relief, they've got to spend a potload of money defending those interests. So what that has thrown up for me as a minister is a challenge around, well, how do we address this? Even aside from the consultation process, how do we address it and meet the challenge uh, of, of addressing that? And it's a legitimate question that you pose, and I don't have the answers now, but let's, let's I think to be fair, I, I think people's anger with you, which you're sensing is palpable, I, I guess. Yeah. Your anger with you is that you had that chance two months ago and you did not listen. No, that's not true. I mean... You signed, you signed exactly that wording, exactly as it was. You rejected an, an alternative SI that was, wait now, you've had your say. Uh, an alternative wording which was put forward by a technical group, which was perfectly reasonable. The argument to say, Europe says we must do this, we must do something. This is something, therefore we must do this. That doesn't stand, right? Because Europe says you must do this. Now, first of all, Europe said you must uh, enact legislation for injunction. I, I accept that, right? Europe has also said that we must incorporate the X case into our legislation, and that's been 15 years, right? So I don't think that we have to rush it through necessarily, right? So there wasn't, okay. there wasn't, a, a, any, uh, there wasn't any rush in it, apart from the fact that we were being sued by uh, EMI for not providing this. So that's point one. Point two is that this is Schrodinger's law. Now, you want to talk about uh, the, the reality and the, and the present and not live in the past uh, and, and uh, be here now is that every day myself and my team have to make decisions as to what we allow people to say. That is abhorrent to me as a, as a, a free speech advocate. I hate deciding what it is you can all say. I want you to get sued if you say something bad. I don't care about that. But if you say something good, fine, it should stand. Live and die by your own words. And I've always said from day one on boards, you own your own words. Right? The problem is that we end up with Schrodinger's law. The law doesn't exist until a ju judge observes it. And it's innocence or guilt is decided then. Now, we don't know in advance, so I can't be uh, I, I, compliant with a law that just doesn't exist yet. Now, we don't know what will get us into trouble. We don't know what will cause us to have a, a court case or an injunction taken against us. We don't know if uh, allowing somebody to stream their webcam from their, from their bedroom, which happens to be showing the rugby match in the background, uh, is, is, a, is illegal. We don't know if, if linking is illegal, for sure. Right? We don't know that... The, 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 uh, all sorts of vagaries, we don't know. Right? So we have to make these decisions. We walk into court, we find out from the judge, the judge goes, no, that's illegal, and it turns out you've broken the law, and in retrospect, you will now be punished for that. That's the way this will work, because we're be the judges are making the decisions as to what is illegal. Now, we have to make those decisions in advance. So we have to make a, a judgment call every day that this is to be stood behind by my company or to not. Now, that's fine for when this company is driven by somebody who's as nutty as I am about freedom of speech. But when somebody else is, uh, is behind it, their argument is always going to be in favor of their company. They will always cut where there is no doubt. Because right? uh, as Simon says, I am responsible by law to my shareholders to not put them in danger, not endanger the company. And I've had to, at, at meetings, argue why defending freedom of speech is in the best interests of the company. So, so that Schrodinger's law that doesn't exist until it, it, it's it observed by a, by a judge, that's lethal, it's toxic to, to this industry. I'm going to have to put it out to the floor, but Minister, just one mm -hmm. quick answer to that. And then, all right, Paul, you want to say something? Just yeah. following on from that, one of the reasons why we as the ISDI are, are concerned about the, the statutory instrument. The fact is, the Minister said it's in the past. It's not in the past, it's in the present. It is a law that's here now. It'll be a long time since the CRC reports till that gets formulated and drafted as the new law, if it's at all, if that's a recommendation. So we're, we're dealing with a space of maybe a number of years still. And in those numbers of years, uh, Tom and his company can get many lawsuits. Our members can get lawsuits, as has, as has already happened in the case of Aircom and UPC and uh, possible threats of other ones. Ha have new letters there. come since the statute instrument was signed? Um, I believe there are, yes. Okay. I'll tell you why there, there won't just, be so many. Sorry. Can I just, yeah. just, the Copyright Act has, has existed since 2000, okay? So business has, has moved on since then. The law then needs to, to reflect that. On the statutory instrument, uh, 
on the statutory instrument, we were in a position where we had advice from two attorneys general, okay? Now, people will say, people, okay, for, for some reason think, yes, EMI was suing the state, so therefore we had to move on this SI. People have made that argument online. They've made that argument on Twitter because EMI were coming in. They were a big, powerful vested interest. If you're asking me about the music industry, I think the music industry needs a serious kick in the behind and needs to come into the 21st century. I'm a, you know, a purchaser of music myself, I for do. instance. Okay, but if you look at the, 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 the protections that exist presently, you have to make the distinction between the cost that uh, accrues to you in terms of having to defend potential actions versus the principle of being able to seek injunctive relief, okay? So your business model is compromised by the fact that somebody out there needs, can seek injunctive relief. And the challenge then is how do we, if, if, if it can be done, how do you cut out the middleman, the intermediary, or put protections there for the intermediary such that it, it goes from A, uh, you know, to see and that B, the intermediary, is taken out of the loop well, is what you're suggesting. But can I just say this? Because SABAM versus Scarlet uh, puts in very clear uh, mechanisms around, you know, monitoring by ISPs of individual uh, users' usage of the internet, if you will. Uh, so too does the, you know, the Charter of Fundamental Rights and the e-commerce directive give protections to the right of an individual to have free access and to be able to use the internet as well. But the question then is, how do you design an infrastructure around being able to protect copyright if we have all acknowledged that the right to copyright does actually exist? Okay, I'd like to throw it out the floor because we are tight in time, so that guy there. Mike, phone coming to you. Sorry, Ross McDonough from Metro Herald. Um, a little off the SI for the moment, but can I just ask the minister to explain his uh, thought process in refusing to appear in the panel with uh, Simon and uh, the late night post deadline change of heart? We're moving on. Get, get off that space. We're now into a different space. It's the consultation copyright review paper. With, with respect, minister, I think it's still an issue because on this you've been accused of you know, making decisions without thinking them through. And you changed your mind a couple of hours later about that. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I've been accused of, of, of many things in my political career. It's a relatively short one, uh, you know. But what I will say is that I, I'm, I'm man enough uh, when I make a bad decision uh, to review it and, and reverse it if necessary. I'm human in that sense. So I'm lucky enough in that I'm not, uh, I'm not dogmatic by nature. So, in essence, you know, I, I'm happy to acknowledge where mistakes have been made, you know? So I hope that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, this lady here. No, no. But, this lady but, here is the question. But if we look at the copyright legislation to answer that question, like if, if the SI uh, why did you not sign the, the alternative that was much better and, and still it gave the injunctive I'll, I'll release? I'll tell you why we didn't sign the alternative, Tom. The, 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 we were given, we relied on the advice of the Attorney General. Was he shown and the alternative? She. She? So it was two of them, both of yeah. them she? No, there's one Attorney General. Okay, I was referring to him. there are two Attorneys General. Um, okay, uh, go on. So you, okay. you showed, the current is, did you show female. it to her? We would have had contact with the office, yes. Did you show the Attorney General? Did you General? tell the alternative SI? I, I, yes or no I'm answer. telling you, honestly and truthfully, that we did have regard to the alternative did you show SI. The and if the you SI. look... Did you show the if, alternative? If, if you look... Uh, if you look at... Uh, if you look at is the that a no? In the Are you just saying no in a no, long if you way? Look at <laughs> Listen, I, if you're asking me, did I personally hand... Did the Attorney General her, see the, it? No, the office. Her office did. <laughs> Minister speaking. No, no. That's, that's a touch me. To Her office did have Th regard to it. That's a pol politician's answer, oh, if ever there was one. Okay, okay, move. Let's. This lady here has a question. Quite a lot of attorneys general suggesting it had previous referendum that it had been sent back to the Attorney General to take a question. Quite a lot of attorneys general suggesting it had previous referendum something about maybe there was something askew there. Okay, question from the floor. Hi, my name is Angela Dorgan. I'm director of First Music Contact, and we nationally resource about 16,000 musicians, artists, and original copyright holders. Uh, their interests lie in the middle area as well. Not all of them are uh, represented by Irma or individual record companies. I suppose one of my um, 
comments would be an observation to the minister and could you please um, make the distinction between the music industry and the record industry they're two very different animals and the music industry innovatively has moved on in leaps and bounds over during the CRC process, it doesn't sound, and, and, and please prove us all wrong, it doesn't sound like you listen to it anyway. And that would be a huge worry. Okay. Um, just on the distinction between, you know, the, the disparate community that is the music community, um, I, I would have shared a platform, for instance, with Pledge Music. And, and so they've created a completely innovative business model around how how they sell music, if you will. So I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm in tune with... I, I think it's an important distinction. The yeah, record industry I, okay. has vested interests that you've listened to. The music industry in its whole is live music and recorded music and copyright and everything else. So yeah. it, it's important to make that distinction. Okay. And individual music issues. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I do, but I, I may have listened to the music industry, but the ISPAI, the ISPs have been into me as well similarly, you know what I mean? So we've listened to both sides of, of the debate on that one. Um, just in relation to this process, it's an independent process. Uh, Owen O'Dell and his team uh, have ownership of this process, if you will. Uh, he and his team formulated these questions, formulated this paper. Uh, Owen O'Dell and his team will make suggestions as to the legislative changes and then ultimately it will be a decision for government. I, I get the process and I get that we can feed into it. I am actually asking you as, as a citizen okay. to another citizen. Okay. Okay. There are a lot of interests, musicians, individual, original copyright holders who are against this. As artists, they own the copyright. If they submit to you that this is not something they support, okay. will you change your mind? Will you listen to anybody? If the vast bulk of people, if, if ah no, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm asking no, no, hold on a second. No, no, please, g just give me a chance here on this one, okay? Please, yeah. No, I'm not trying to tick down the t the clock either, sir. Just in case you think I'm trying to do that. But what I'm trying to do is, yeah, you have to have regard to the, the complete picture. So you, you're saying, I, like, I don't hold a brief for any one stakeholder in this process, contrary to popular opinion, okay? I really no, don't. No, that's not my okay. Okay, contrary to popular, to yeah, and we have to do that, yeah. and that's why I'm sitting here today, because we've had traditional, we've had traditional modes of consultation in this country, uh, where whole rafts of, of citizens uh, have been left out of the process, and now we have three processes involved here, uh, which which I hope, but which, I, but I will listen, I will listen, absolutely. What, what I want to do is I want to create a scenario here in this country where we remove any barriers to innovation. That's the process here. So if we... Yeah, but hold on a second. I'm not answering my question. I, 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 will, I, will, I will seek to... I, I want to see a liberal regime here that protects everybody, okay? I want to see democracy working. If the overwhelming from all the yeah. individual agendas, if the overwhelming response from all of us, then... Uh, absolutely. Or, uh, if it's a no, please change your mind. Will you change your I, mind? I, I will change my mind if Great. you speak. But, but, but Thank but, you for your honesty. But, but, but I, I have to... You see, it's, it's, that's black and that's white, OK? Yeah. And so I Which said yes. Which is what I think this debate has lacked, with respect. OK, but, it, but it's, there are so many different competing interests. It's such sure. a dis so many different communities here, Absolutely. if you think about it logically. Yeah. And then you've got, you've got the fact that we have to be adherent or ad idem with uh, EU legislation. So for instance, and this is what I said at the outset, if we find that we are now ahead of the curve in terms of where the EU is, then the challenge to bring about the changes will be to bring the EU kicking and screaming into line with where we want to go on this type of legislation. And so when I answer yes, that's where I want to go, 
I have to make you aware of the fact that there will be challenges in but Europe. But wouldn't it be great process. to lead the EU rather than follow it in some Well, we're, we've got the presidency of the European Union uh, in, you know, from January of next year. Okay. You know, innovation is going to, and research, for which I have particular responsibilities for, are going to be two key pillars that we want to drive as part of our themes. But wh what do you think I want to do as a minister? Do you think, I don't, I fund the Derry Institute. I have no opinion either way. I would just ask that you no, listen okay. to the voices coming back. Yeah, and you've Tom, said that, Tom that's like great. To it's, it, it's a rhetorical okay. question, Can I but I fund Derry, I fund the Clarity Institute in UCD. They're all doing research in the Can I answer the question that, that the ladies asked? Can I answer the, the question that the ladies asked? With all due respect to the minister, and I'm not referring to the minister, I'm excluding the minister now from, from this answer. No, you will not get listened to. All right? And I'll tell you why you won't get listened to, because I went to the CRC meeting on the Saturday morning, right? and there was, there was 50, and I counted them, roughly 50 lobbyists, paid lobbyists, me, two librarians, and a bloke who wanted to talk about his DVD region encoding. Right? Those people are paid. Their daily job is to protect that industry. Their daily job is to lobby, lobby, lobby. Right? And when, you, when it's made to seem like we have a, a middle of the ground answer, it will be because so much has been done on their side, the 99% of the win will be on their side and the crumbs will be left to us. I'd like right? to because, because, and, and, uh, one second. because when we got round through the copyright holders, the, the intermediaries, the fair use, the dealing, the, a big sign came up saying, now we will talk about the users of copyright, and nobody said a word. There wasn't one single person. And eventually I put up my hand and I said, I think it's instructive that there is nobody here to speak for the users. There was 80,000 people signed his um, uh, 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 petition. And it wasn't listened to. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of thousands of people angry about the banks getting like 3.1 million this month, 80 billion overall, uh, 3.1 billion overall. They're not listening to them. You think they're going to listen to you about your music? I'm sorry, they just aren't. So don't fool yourselves. So get out there, get involved in the CRC, make your voices heard as much as you can because that's the only chance we have. But don't delude yourselves that that's going to actually make a huge big difference and that it's going to win a big war. Right? This is a long, long war and we're here for the fight.